What's up guys, it's Dalmata here, and today we're going to be reacting to Frostpunk Review, Frostbite Steam the British. So this is from Bricky, and I've reacted to a couple of his videos before. Somebody told me I should check out this one. I actually have this game, but I've never played it. I'm subscribed to Humble Bundles, and it came out in one of the Humble Monthly things. And yeah, so I have it on Steam, I've just never played it. So maybe this will convince me to actually try that out, because I have like something like 900 games on Steam, thanks to Humble Bundles, and I think I've played... I'm going to guess maybe a hundred of them, if that. Most of them just sit there unplayed. Uh, actually, I still have a bunch of codes I need to put on because I don't. Ch I check like every three months and then just add all the codes on. Um, but anyway, link to the original video down below and let's jump into this. So is this like a post-apocalyptic steampunk game? It's kind of the vibes I'm getting. Hello everybody, my name is Bricky, currently freezing to death because the captain forgot to recall me before the great storm. A surefire way to tell that I'm getting older is by the games I've been reviewing. As a young brick, Halo 3, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Midnight Release at a GameStop or a Microsoft Store, those were the times. <laughs> now, we've reached the point of depressing post-apocalyptic city builder about the morality of the last city on Earth. And by God, do I love it. Frostpunk is a brutal... Man, I miss the fucking midnight releases before all games became digital. I think the last one I went to was Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. It was me, two of my buddies, and this girl I was friends with at the time. I guess I'm still kind of friends with her, but we don't really talk much anymore. Uh, but she did not want to be there. <laughs> and I had to fucking go out to the car with her, and she was so pissed off. And then we went to Wild Wings afterwards, and she was so mad that we went to the Pokemon release that we fucking... She literally, instead of coming into Wild Wings, she just sat in the car the whole time moping for like an hour. Yeah, I, I stopped talking to her because it was... Oh my god. <laughs> it was in retrospect it was funny as hell but at the time it was like jesus christ are you you like five like you're throwing a hissy fit over the fact that we went and picked up some video games brutal city builder survival game created by 11-bit studios out of warsaw poland which means yes this is another incredibly depressing polish game which is just mm. Man, Poland pumps out a Frostpunk lot of games. came out in 2018 to almost all positive reviews, with the negative reviews mainly citing the optimization frame rate stuttering problems. Now, in 2021, with multiple DLC and many patches out, Frostpunk is one of the best city builders I have ever played. It is a crushing game that combines management, city building, survival, morality, major decision making, and the worst part of them all, angry British, all into one fantastic, brutal simulator that just carries itself on so many fantastic factors. It's it is a, sick a gorgeous, train. exciting, and engrossing title that I would highly recommend to almost anybody, even to those who are not huge fans of City Builders. And with that being said, let's talk a little bit about- Oh no no no! Oh man, I think that's the new Dragon Ball game that I just got the ad for. I'm not excited for this game. I, when I first saw the, the initial trailer for it, I thought it was going to look good, and then I saw some of the gameplay, and it's like, eh. Is all about. The game is set in 1886, where in an alternate history after the eruption of Krakatoa in 1883, along with many other major factors, the entire planet has seen a major global cooling. In response to this, giant generators were constructed in order to house all the population to survive during this ice age period of time. And that is where you take place. In the main scenario titled A New Home, you and a group of people are fleeing London from the riots and civil war, as well as the free freezing cold to go find a new place to live out there in the frozen wastes and you come across an unmanned generator in this gigantic old pit so you go down there start the bastard up and that is when the game truly begins and it starts at a just crisp 
negative 20 degrees Celsius. I'm so jacked up on America. Your first task. Yeah, I was gonna say that, that's not even that bad. That's like literally what it is outside right here right now. I'm, I'm in Canada. We just had like a fucking three four day blizzard. You couldn't leave your house. It was like negative 20, negative 30 the whole time. To get the generator up and running. The generator is love. The generator is life. Everything flows through the generator. Starting off, you have no buildings, no homes. So you're going to need to build them. But to build homes and tents and such, you need wood. So you got to go gather some wood. But don't forget about that coal, though. You need to make sure the generator is still functional. Uh-oh, you sent people through the snow to go get your wood. That's not good. Now they're getting sick because of hypothermia. You need to make a medical post in order to treat them. But a medical post costs wood. And also, not anyone can just man a medical post. You need doctors for that. Don't forget about that coal, though. You need food badly. You could have some people go out to hunter huts to be able to find smaller little critters and try to get food that way. But that's just raw food. You can't eat raw food. You need to cook it. So go ahead and build a cookhouse. Oh, but a cookhouse costs wood and you need people to man said cookhouse. Don't forget about that coal though. Steel. We need steel. We're running low on resources and we're going to need things like coal thumpers and sawmills. We need steel for that kind of stuff. Do we, do we have steel? Is there enough steel out there? We need workshops to do research as well. And only some people can do research. We need engineers for that. Do, do we have engineers? Don't forget about that coal, though. Wood, <laughs> steel, coal, food. Wood, steel, coal, food. Wood, steel, coal, food. Freezing temperatures, starvation, hypothermia, sickness, death. Motivation? I think not. Discontent? <laughs> you fucking know it. The fro So... I could tell 100% this was made by... I'm almost surprised it was made by Polish people because what's the average temperature in Poland? I'm going to Google this. Average winter temperature in Poland. Yeah, I'm surprised they have it. Uh, really, it only goes down to negative 9 to negative 6. I thought it would be colder. Yeah. According to <coughs> Google, the greatest source on the internet, the uh, drops at night to about negative. I always thought it would be colder, but I guess it is on the West Coast. And one thing, like the West Coast of the Eurasian landmass, and one thing about West Coast, they're way warmer. Like if you look at like Newfoundland and Labrador is cold as shit, but then Victoria, British Columbia is the same latitude, but it's you know, on the west coast versus the east coast, because of that, it's much warmer. Um, yeah, I always thought, like, Poland, I thought would be much colder than that. That's weird. Frostpunk formula is just never-ending tension. We're the tots. Yeah, the, the idea of dying in, like, negative 20 to negative 30 degree weather. I mean, I guess you could if you were, like, incredibly fucking stupid and, like, went out there, like, naked or something. But... Fucking people working that shit like eight hours a day where I live. It's not. <laughs> String of your city threatens to snap at the worst inconvenience. Was your lack of food the pair of scissors that snipped that string? Was it your lack of steel? Did you run out of coal? Was it sickness and lack of medics? What thing did you neglect and why did that make you fail? But you're a leader of people, not robots, or at least not yet. Ooh, Holy cool. Shell. And people have needs too. That's why you have discontent and hope. You need to make sure you understand the needs of your people and of your city. If discontent rises too heavily and goes above hope, you're gonna have consequences. And consequences can lead to riots. And riots can lead to you being exiled from the city, which means you lose. Ooh. Or worse. Oh shit. Managing all dark. your hope and discontent is as important, if not more, than managing your actual resources themselves. Luckily for you, you are the captain, and you run this city, which means you can pass laws to assist with that. You can pass laws every so often with a minor fighting cooldown, arena, and these things can either help you a lot more in the resource management section, or help you a lot more in the discontent and hope section. Some are things that make a lot of sense, like a cemetery. You'll be forced to build one, but that'll increase the hope of your people, or a fighting arena that'll decrease the discontent of your people. Other things can be a little bit more dubious, and some things can be, well, have a, a bit of a moral problem. Think about the children! That's a good idea! Listen, everyone. New law is signed. 
Ruining the last <laughs> city on Earth does have its restrictions, though. In a 24-hour time block, you have work and free time. On work time, it's as it sounds, they go and harvest different kinds of materials, they work at the sawmill, they work at the factory, they do all the things you tell them to do, but when their time is off, they go back and they either build buildings, if there are buildings to be built, or they sleep and do nothing, because... That's how a city runs. This entire time, you're gonna be maintaining that generator. The generator is your life blood. Everything flows through that generator because the generator produces heat. The cold in Frostpunk is directly related to the possibility of your people becoming sick. The colder they are, the higher chance they have of becoming sick. And when they're sick, they can't work. If someone gets- So that's actually kind of interesting because that's like a myth. Um, I know it's a video game, and the fact that it's actually getting down to negative 40, now we're talking about temperatures that are actually, you know, starting to get dangerous, but, um, yeah, the, the fact that you get cold when you're, you can get sick when you're cold is actually kind of a myth, and the reason it's kind of a myth is because when it's freezing cold out, a lot of people spend more time inside, and, the, and then you get, like, clogged up with all these viruses that are in the house instead of being out in the fresh air, um, but yeah, it's not actually the cold the weather that's making you sick. In fact, it would probably be incredibly hard for viruses to spread in this environment. I guess they, maybe they adapted, but I mean, you're talking about just a few years after the Krakatoa explosion, so I don't know if they would have had time to adapt, but, you know, cr creative, we would give them, like, creative liberty, I guess. Extremely sick. An anal they about. might get frostbite, and they might end up losing a limb and becoming an amputee. I wouldn't call and frostbite amputee, being sick. They can't work again forever. Kind of nitpicky, unless though. you sign perhaps the prosthetic law. But guess what? Prosthetics cost steel. Because of this, how you build your city entirely revolves around said generator. You're going to want things like homes and medical posts to be a lot closer to the generator, where certain things like hunters' huts don't really need heating because they're going out to go hunt anyway, and you can send those damn far away. Soon though, your local deposits will run dry, which means you're going to need new buildings, and that's where the workshop comes in. The workshop is one of the best single buildings in the entire game. It is manned entirely by engineers, which is a special class of worker, and they allow you to research brand new upgrades to assist you. You're not going to win without this. That's a simple fact. You need a workshop. In fact, if you have multiple workshops, it'll also speed up the time frame of the research. This has some things that are just lifeblood, like heaters and steam hubs that allow you to take the power of the generator and push it farther out away from it to allow for little heat zones and make up for the lack of the generator's long range. There are many, many upgrades that help you out in a myriad of ways, and every single one that you pick will make you feel like you picked not the wrong one, but you wish you picked a different one at the time, because that's the balancing act with it. You'll need a way for more coal, so you're going to want a coal thumper. You'll want to insulate all of your people's homes, so you're going to want the bunkhouses. You're also going to want things like a beacon to increase the amount of scouts you got out there. Which, speaking of scouts, let's talk about scouts. <laughs> scouts, or by their scientific name, no complainus, big dickus, are some of the greatest giga chads in all of Frostpunk. These boys you create with a little bit of wood and a couple of your workers, and then you send them out into the frozen wastes. And guess what? They don't need to sleep. They don't ever get sick. And they just go out there and find stuff. Scouts go out into like negative 70 Celsius weather without a single care. And with <laughs> Okay, that's actually pretty accurate then because, again, like they're going out into the negative weather and they're staying healthy. Um, you know, kind of realistic ever needing to rest. They work 24-7. They bring back everything from coal, wood, steel, special steam cores, which you need for high-level buildings, and other survivors, and they bring them all back to camp. Scouts are paramount. Scouts have done everything from creating an outpost on Nikola Tesla's exploding electric city and fist-fighting bears to <laughs> save civilians. Scouts, you are my MVP. Sooner or later, you start to chads. get things a little under control. And that's why the game throws a wrench at you. Something happens in the game that causes a whole lot of problems for your people. Discontent rises, hope falls, and eventually, you need to make a choice. And that's where the fun morality part of the game comes in. You need to give your people something. They need something to hold on to. They need a reason to keep going. So do you choose order? Do you run your city as a totalitarian regime with an iron fist through law and order and obedience, or do you choose faith, which is basically just order but with JC. 
This is yeah, one I was going to say. Favorite parts of <laughs> I thought that would be like order or democracy or discipline and order and fucking like freedom or something. No, it's just uh, what kind of totalitarianism do you want? Do you want to run a theocracy or like a, I guess like pseudo-communist dictatorship? Frostpunk and also one of its few flaws. See, when you choose one of these two, say for order, for instance, it starts off at a very nice, not very problematic level. Order starts with the neighborhood watch and a couple watchtowers. You know, just to make sure things are going well, just to make sure there isn't any violence, to make sure people feel safe. Simple stuff, you know, nothing wrong with that at all. And then you can move on a little bit farther. You can get like a foreman, which is good to help people work a little bit harder. But then you get a little bit worse. You get giant agitator speakers and uh, propaganda centers and spies and sometimes beatings in order to put people into submission. And sometimes you can go as far as the, the new order, which is the highest of them all where you completely take over the entire town and create a full-on totalitarian nationalist regime. Hope will never be a problem again. Not when you have an execution platform and not when hope is obedience. On the flip <laughs> side, my issue is that it's basically the exact same thing as order, but with a religious twist. It starts off simple. Chapels, a couple shrines, the usual thing, maybe some morning prayer, gatherings, eh, totally fine. But then it goes worse and worse and public penance and all that kind of crap. And then you have the new faith. It basically feels just like another totalitarian regime, but with a religious side to it. I wish they were a little bit more different. Personally, I like order a bit more, but even so, I think Faith could have used a bit more of a of a zealotous feel to it instead of yeah. like order with JC. I mean, I play Warhammer. I can understand a good zealotism when I see one. What makes it? Yeah, I'm kind of surprised they did that. Um, you would. I guess maybe it's because it was made in Poland, so they very much view religion and authoritarianism as antithetical to each other because of the last authoritarian regime they were under was the communist regime. So for them, and, and they obviously outlawed Christianity at certain periods throughout that, and even when it wasn't outlawed, it was heavily suppressed. So they probably view these things as diametrically opposed, but they're really not. I mean, there have been theocracies in history as well, right? There are very few systems that cannot be totalitarian and authoritarian like authoritarian like e even democracies are right this is like the whole entire argument against like de direct democracy and like why some people are like staunch republicans and i mean like republicans not in the sense of the party in the united states but like in the sense of like the ideology like republicanism um which is you know this idea that there is like a constitution and even if people vote to do certain things it's against the constitution so they're not allowed to um, although, you know, the problem is eventually, you know, the three years of wear and tear, people can just slowly break down that constitution. You kind of see that in the United States right now with people trying to go after the guns and stuff. Uh, but yeah, like really any system can, can become authoritarian. So, but I, I can see why being a Polish game, why they would have these things as diametrically opposed because in their recent history, they were diametrically opposed so fascinating is that neither of these two are in a sense morally bad when it starts out because everything on the lower echelon of the law book is pretty reasonable but when hope starts to fall discontent starts to rise and your city starts to be going completely out of whack those new options seem really enticing to you and it is insane how fast this game will turn you into a monster to keep <laughs> the city alive. The rest of the game is truly a treat and I think you should absolutely experience it because mother nature <laughs> will not hold back. Hi dad. Oh, now, negative 90. Why is my Negative 90 degrees Celsius. Now we're talking about dangerous temperatures. Cause like at first they're talking like negative 20, negative 30. And I was like, you can tell that the like, people have made this game live in a lot warmer climate than I do, that's for sure. And bricky as well, uh, for, for the way that they thought of negative 20 and negative 30. But then when you get to negative 40, it's like, okay, you're starting to get into some dangerous territory. And then negative 90, it's like, okay, you would, you would like, freeze to death fucking damn near instantly. Sister's name Rose. Well, son, it's because Rose is your mother's favorite thing. <laughs> oh, this named fucking sister meme. Rose. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Thanks, Dad. No problem. Violin section of the City Must Survive song.
Frostpunk really gets by on its visual and audio systems. And while the gameplay is phenomenal and the morality stuff is just absolutely interesting and great, I think that really having it being pleasurable to look at adds a whole lot to it. Because city builders aren't always a very pretty game. Sometimes they are, but often it's a lot more about function over form. And for me, Frostpunk does both yeah. perfectly. If you look at the UI in general, the UI really does a great job. Honestly, even, even just the graphics. Right, because like a lot of city builder games have like cartoony graphics, and I understand why. Right, it makes the game um, able to play on like shittier hardware because it's not going to eat up as much of your like your you know your RAM and your graphics card and all that shit. But it, you know the, the the graphics on this actually look pretty damn good. Selling that kind of punky steampunk feel to it, but then certain things get added. Like whenever you see a brand new notification or an area from the scouts are being checked on, and you see that kind of way the ice kind of cracks to show open the whole image and to really kind of spread open in like the weird creaking, cracked ice way whenever you have any new visuals. It's really fascinating and it adds a lot of depth to the game and it gives it so much more character. Hell, even things like finishing up new research or opening up certain tabs have that kind of click, click, click steampunk style to it. Yeah. Everything UI design wise feels so crisp and well made and it's one of the few things that I think is nigh perfect. And I haven't even like talked about child this labor yet. Oh. Yeah, a town crier. So, Bricky, what I'm gathering is that Frostpunk is a fantastic game with a wonderful scenario and that you should go buy it. Damn straight. But at times, you can't find a little bit of a lack of replayability. And that is where the scenarios come in. Everything I've talked about right now is just one scenario. The main one, a new home. The okay. game actually the starts arcs. with four. The arcs are about maintaining these giant seed holders that you need to maintain their heat for while also surviving yourself. It's basically the same as the main game, except you don't get any new people. You only get extra automatons to work on everything. And you also need to protect these multiple different kinds of seed arcs. So do the people just not breed? Is it like all men or what's going on here? I feel like not getting new people is kind of weird. I mean, I understand, like, they're trying to add a, you know, dynamic to it, but what is the, do they have, like, a reason behind that, or they're just like, nah, just, you know, guess, guess, sure have fun. stay warm enough. It's nothing to stand out, but it's worth playing. The Refugees is interesting. This is one where you actually gain a ton of new people, but the problem with the Refugees is that your group has fled the high-class lords in the prior city, and they're going to be arriving eventually once you create your city. So now you've got the lower working class having to deal with the upper echelon lords coming to the city and possibly trying to take it over as their own. So you have to deal with the morality of that scenario and whether or not you let those, those lords in. The fall of Winterhome is when you have a bullying kink. Basically, the prior ruler of Winterhome <laughs> was a shithead and was killed and the entire city burned in a massive civil war. So, you are here to clean up what he, what he, what he did. It's so tough. It's so fucking hard. The entire area has a myriad of problems. All of the homes are burnt and you have to get rid of all of them. The generator's having problems. Everything has gone to shit. Discontent is already really high. It's like you're taking over after a horrible, horrible ruler prior. It is very, very difficult and it throws you curveballs at every single <clears throat> avenue it's a very good scenario easily the best of the extra scenarios way better than the arcs and refugees but by lord is it fucking hard there yeah. are also two more dlcs on the edge and the last autumn now on the edge is a pretty interesting one it actually takes place after you finish a new how old is this because this is a year ago let me check steam I'm pretty sure I have more DLC than that. 
Because I was uh, when I saw this on the video, I decided I was gonna check see if I had this game. Frostpunk. Yeah, I have one, two. Oh, one's just a digital art book. The other two are yeah, okay. But yeah, I already have this game. I just and this is what I mean. Like, watch this when I go to fucking games. How many games do I have? I have nine hundred and two games. And where's the last game I played? So the game I've played the least is Sega Genesis Classics. This is an order of most played. Uh, we're maybe 10% down. And then it's just all shit I've never touched. And a lot of it's stuff I want to play. I've just never gotten around to it. And then others just like... The thing with Humble Bundles, if you've never used it, they're not sponsored in this video, but I fucking use them all the time. Humble Bundles always has these deals where it's like, they'll have like some bundle, and it'll be like $5 for the bundle. And the bundle will come with like 30 fucking games, and you only want one. But it's literally cheaper to buy that whole bundle than it is to buy that game individually on Steam. And then next thing you know, you have 900 games, because you keep paying $5 for like 20 or 30 games new home and it has you on this long side crevice and a army warehouse and the way you work with this one is you actually communicate with local civilizations one has food one has wood one has coal and you have steel and you trade all of your resources back and forth for the various resources there because you can't actually get food in basically any way so it's really interesting to have that dilemma but it's very short and lacks any real replayability so maybe skip that one unless you're just dying for more frostpunk the last autumn is incredible i could probably make an entire video on the last autumn in its own right i might do it the last autumn is actually a prequel it takes place before the great cooling and you are running a labor force you're working on a labor force to build one of those major generators the last autumn doesn't have to worry about cold because the cold hasn't arrived yet it's a perfectly nice temperature but you're entirely based around running that workforce hope is not there it's now motivation you don't need to worry about coal for heaters you need to worry about coal for ventilation because workplace safety is a new major factor here people won't get sick because of the cold they'll get sick because your workplaces are hazardous and dangerous because this is the 1880s and man we're, was shit dangerous back then yeah no shit oh and then you got the lines between the higher echelon engineers and the working class usual workers. And the two of them are constantly at each other's throats and you have to work with them to see what is the best avenue. Do you go with the engineers? These are literally, some form these are literally the same guy. It's literally the same fucking dude. Are they brothers or something? Men's and overseers to make sure things are getting done to specification. Or do you go on a workers union to make sure that they get all the rights that they want? Both have pluses, both have negatives, and both can get really dark. The last autumn is completely worth the money. It is incredible. It is almost as good as a new home. I think it just comes slightly short, but it's absolutely worth buying. And the morality system, unlike order and faith, engineers and workers are a lot more different. They feel a lot different. And do they get dubious? And finally, do you want more Frostpunk? Because you got endless mode which is also quite difficult. Endless mode combines all these kinds of factors and all these different kinds of twists and turns against you. Endless mode is great. I would highly recommend endless mode. Uh, it is fun to try if you are just dying for more Frostpunk, but you know, it's still just endless mode. So, you know, that's up to you. Overall, Frostpunk is an extremely engrossing management game. It combines the fantastic visuals and audio that I don't see in many city builders with a very dark, depressing steampunk vibe that is both extremely difficult and horrendously rewarding, both from the moral attitude and from that final victory that you can get if you pull it off. Thank you to my fantastic patrons and to my other members. If you want to... Yeah, so that honestly might have... Well, I mean, not even might have. That 100% just sold me on that game. I'm going to download that tonight when I go to bed because I don't want it slowing down my... Uh, eating up my bandwidth while I'm fucking playing games and stuff later and uploading this video. But I'm definitely going to be playing that. And that's something we already have. So we can uh, hop into that right away. So let's check this out here. I'm going to look at this a little bit. So yeah, it's only a 9 gigabyte game. Okay, pretty small. 
115 achievements. Holy crap. What's the most difficult one? Probably get all achievements. That's usually the standard most difficult one. Make all other settlements distrustful towards you in endless mode. Okay. Make all other settlements distrustful towards you. Finish the edge scenario with Survivor. I'm going to Survivor. It's a difficulty? It's a... Maybe. Build the generator in the last autumn. Okay, cool. Yeah, we might do that. Well, I'm definitely going to download it, so... Who has it? Dennis has it. Took has it. No, Hatch has it on his... Oh, Cam also has it, no doubt. He has Humble Bundles as well. Uh, yeah, so... Definitely something I'm going to try out. I'm going to have to put that on the downloads. Also, apparently there's a Halo update. And, oh, what's the update for Unrailed? This is an amazing game, by the way, if you've never played it. So fun, so addicting. Um, if you guys get it and I'm on stream playing it, definitely join up sometime because it is amazing fun. But anyway, let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.